So it's been a while since I've done a video on my Sinatra Edition Imperial, and there's a reason for that. Um, it's been gone for about six months, and um, long story short, is um, had to get it fixed. Uh, I had a stalling problem, uh, but not what you think um, with these uh, EFI systems. Um, I had a, um, it, as it turned out, it was the pins that went to the computer, the actual connector to the computer. And so it was having a no start problem. Well, I took it to a mechanic that I trusted, um, who promised me that he knew what he was doing. And as it turned out, he didn't. And long story short is he basically wrecked the fuel injection system and took everything apart and put the distributor back wrong, disconnected the EGR, um, took apart the fuel pump and the hydraulic plate. Um, just really crazy stuff. Uh, had the guts to charge me $300, um, which I promptly uh, challenged. And so I took it over to my other mechanic who told me, hey, you know what, I can work on it and I will figure out what's wrong with it what was originally wrong with it, and all that kind of thing. So I brought him literally every fuel injection manual that I had, as well as the year's worth of emails on the Imperial uh, forum. Um, and by the way, thanks to all those guys on there, some of whom were on our, YouTube, our Facebook page, and some who've unfortunately passed on. Um, and I appreciate all the information that they were able to provide. As I forwarded that on to my mechanic. And so he spent about three months and put it all back together again. And it runs better than ever. And uh, so I just got it back and I cleaned it out. It needed a good vacuuming and cleaning. And my seats have always been torn. Uh, I, I got this car for free in San Francisco. I'll get to that in a minute, uh, just in case you forgot the story. But anyway, he put the fuel injection system back together and he actually did a small fuel bypass, um, very tiny. Um, I forget how many tenths of an inch he said it was. And he went ahead and did a bypass. And um, long story short is uh, it's not running as lean anymore. Um, this modification is really interesting. Um, he went ahead and he drilled a tiny, tiny pinhole um, near the um, oh where the where the fuel is monitored, and he showed me. And I this car runs better than ever as a result. Um, it was running lean. Uh, he thinks it's because of the programming. These were originally, of course, programmed to run lean, but I think as the age has gotten to some of them, I think that they're just running leaner and leaner. And so it's having a hard time starting. Now it doesn't have a hard time with the cold start at all, and it's running a lot better. Everything is within spec, and basically with the additional bypass, it's now running fantastic. Um, these are, of course, very fussy cars, and each one seems to be different. I've had some different issues with this one compared to the white 82 that I have that's uh, fuel-injected as well that we're trying to get to pass emissions right now. And this one is fussy in a different way. And so just to go back on the story on this one, I got this back a year and a half ago in July. It was free. Yes, free. <laughs> and a gentleman was getting rid of it at the um, in San Francisco. And um, he, he listed it on the Imperial website, the Chrysler Imperial Club website. And um, anyway, after some calls, I was able to get it for free. And he just gave it to me. And it had been sitting since 1997. And it was sat because it got stuck on the Golden Gate Bridge. 
and the guy never drove it again. He was an executive with Wells Fargo, according to his business card that I found here in the car, at least during that era he was. And he was gonna modify it, put a 360 in it, all that kind of thing. Couldn't find fuel injection parts. And um, so long story short is I got it and sent it to one place. They had it for several months fixing it. Uh, they did an okay job, but it wasn't perfect. And then after I got it home, that's when we started having some of these issues with the fuel injection system and the car stalling. As it turned out, the pins in the connector were no good for uh, the computer. And so that was the problem, that was the original problem. And now it runs fantastic. And everything's functioning well. We're gonna take it and do another emissions test. Hopefully we're with inspect the next time around. Um, the good news is, is my AC and heater work. So while it was there, I asked the man uh, my friend who's the mechanic, if you can look at the AC, he found it was still filled with R12, partially. Very low, but still filled. And so he went ahead and he put it over to 134. Yes, I know R12's better, but he couldn't get any. And um, did the retrofit kit. Replaced, I think, an O-ring or two. And it blows ice cold. Original compressor too, original hoses, uh, which is pretty fantastic. And um, I have an idling course right now. And there's some fun stuff with this. Uh, my fuel flow meter still works. Um, that's actually where he did uh, the small bypass with the fuel. Um, he did a small pinprick hole just a little bit past the fuel flow meter. And as a result, it's giving a little extra fuel um, than it originally did. Just a hair, not much, not, not uh, to make it rich or anything, but just enough to not make it as lean anymore. So my hope is, is that that fixes the problem. So I've driven it today. It has a full tank of gas, as you can see, um, of 91, because that's what you want to put in the EFI Imperials. And so here we are. And so I've been driving it and it drives fantastic. So hopefully tomorrow or the next day, we'll do our emissions test and hopefully we'll pass well. Uh, I still have to get an alignment on it. The last time I took it to get an alignment, uh, it was having the issues with the computer pin plug and uh, they had a hard time trying to even drive it around the block. So, but now we seem to be good to go. And so far so good. So I'll take some more videos during the day of the car and the EFI system, and hopefully you'll enjoy them. But, um, of course it is a Sinatra, and people ask me, hey, do you have the cassettes? Yes, those are the original cassettes. Well, not quite, but they are the cassettes that came with the car originally, and the same issues too. I found them on eBay, so I bought all the cassettes uh, to go in there, and then I have my little cassette adapter. I actually replaced the radio. This is not one from 82. Um, this is actually one from 81. And they had these in the 81 Sinatras. And you could get this or the digital one. Um, this is the only one I have that works. So I put it in there for now. Um, when I got the car, it had a weird Kenwood 1993-like radio in it, and it was really bad. And it didn't even work, so I replaced it. And so, but yeah, I have a Sinatra. The Sinatra tapes there, and uh, I play them. And uh, I still have to wipe down a few things in the car, the glove box door and the armrests. I'll do that tomorrow morning. But I also shampooed the carpet before I sent it off all those months ago, and it's still nice and clean. I replaced the Sinatra console with one that didn't have, it wasn't all worn out, um, because someone had left the... Uh, left the window partially down when it sat all those years, so a lot of stuff went bad. Like I replaced the climate control, the radio, the bezel, the buttons there, the the gauge cluster. Um, I actually have another shift handle here. Um, this one, of course, has the foil that's coming off of it, which can cut your hand open. And um, I'd replaced the door handle a few months ago and all that. But 
I'll do a little tour tomorrow since it's been a while. And hopefully you enjoyed my little video on the Sin update on the Sinatra Imperial that I got for free. And it's running great. So we'll do a test drive tomorrow video. And uh, hopefully you enjoy it. And um, these are very, very rare. And I only know of, I think, two other Sinatras that are still running the EFI system. This being one of them. So until next time, we'll see you soon.